Etsy's custom design here on YouTube, Etsy, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, I am jumping on here tonight. Um, this is not really a per se Photoshop tutorial, but it, it kind of is. Um, I was sitting down to create at least one um, paper and figured I would bring you along to just go through my thought process with me. Um, whenever I'm doing this, a lot of times on my digital um, collections, I will go through and just create several pages. And then I, I, the ones that go together and then I see a theme develop and then I kind of draw through um, like that. So everybody may not work that way. That's just how I work. But if I'm going to be sitting here doing something on Photoshop, I figured I would bring you along. Um, now, tomorrow night, I do have a special um, tutorial plan for Canva, um, the, and then I'll go over the, the Canva versus Canva Pro, and we'll go through all of that. But tonight, I am going to be working in Photoshop on my iPad. Now, um, Photoshop can be on your computer, your iPad. They even have um, a small version for your phone. And obviously, you can't do as much on the iPad and uh, phone, and it doesn't have to be an iPhone or iPad. It can be um, Android-based as well. Um, you can't do as much on here as you can, per se, on the computer. But a lot of times, I prefer, um, when I am layering images, I actually prefer to do that on my iPad because of my pencil. And you'll see why. Now, as I've you know talked to you about in um, other videos, um, we are going to go to create new, and then when we hit create new, we come up with this screen. Now, I already have my custom um, page set at 11 by eight and a half inches, and so that's going to give me a page in landscape. If I wanted it in portrait, it would be eight and a half by 11. Um, so I've got that. I have my background set to white, and I want the resolution to be 300 um, pixels per inch. And so I'm just gonna hit create. Okay, now I'm going to just reduce that down a little bit so that I am working on that. I can see the full sheet at one time. So this is layer one, this is our background. And let me just go ahead, and I'm just gonna start and just show you what I'm doing, you can hear my dogs. They always start. I apologize. I'm gonna pause it for a moment, I think. Okay, they seem to have calmed down until I get started again and then they'll get going. So back where I was, I'm just going through and I kind of have an idea of what I want. Now, next week, I am going to go through um, where exactly I get my designs and how to look for um, the designs and graphics. So, I've put this on, and I am just pulling it down until it covers um, the entire page, and then I'm going to click Done. So, now that's layer two. Can you all hear my cat now? I'm going to lose it one of these days. <laughs> no, I'm not, but... I am just, I may not talk as much because I'm, I'm just going to be working, but I just, you know, I really wanted to bring you along. So I'm just adding this in and I'm going to click done. So let's just go ahead and work on this right here. So as you see, there's a huge contrast between these. And, you know, who would want this as a journal page? I mean, there may be some people, but I wouldn't. So I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna choose my paintbrush. I'm going down to the three dots down here on the bottom left, clicking it, and I'm just making sure that my blend mode is set to clear. I am going to check my opacity, and a 69 is good for right, actually we'll take it up to about 72 because I'm gonna really get rid of some of that. Um, and I think even the size at 158 is pretty decent for right now. And so I'm just gonna go in, and right now I just really, I'm actually gonna pull the opacity up because I really wanna get rid of 
that area there. And now I have my brush over here. You can see I have it, it's set on landscaper. I like the texture that that gives. Um, so that's what I normally keep it set on is either that or the splatter and texture, um, something like that, because I don't want it just straight lines. And so I'm just gonna, I'm going down here and I'm just really, this is with the opacity set really high. I don't want that white there. Okay, now let me go back over here and let me just reduce the opacity down to maybe 40 right in there. And I'm going to take my brush size up a little bit, maybe a lot of it. <laughs> I took it up to 450, I think. Um, because what I want to do is I want to knock down how bright these roses are. And so now I've got my opacity set pretty um, low. And see, I can just take some of the color down. And I won't have the stark lines from the um, pencil when it, where it was set smaller. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going back over here. I'm reducing the brush size down a little bit. I'm going to increase the opacity just a little bit, and I'm going to go right through here. Because I really want to clean this up some. I don't need all of that green showing. And I'm trying my hardest not to shake the table, but it is difficult to do. And now remember to make sure you have whatever layer you're wanting to work on, make sure that's the layer you have selected because you're only going to be working on whatever layer is selected over there. Um, I have been doing the erase or something like that and I have had it on the wrong layer and so when I would go and look, I would be erased almost all of the layer that I didn't even want to touch. So a lot of times, um, like right the, now, I don't have but just a, um, a couple of layers. It's not a big deal. But sometimes I will hide layers so that I can really see what all there is. And that way I can make sure that I am editing the um, actual layer that I want to edit. You know, and with Photoshop and your digital designing, um, something that works for one person may not work for you. Um, you may prefer to see the um, harsh, you know, the straight lines or whatever. Um, you may not want to have it faded like this and weathered looking. And that's the beauty of it is everybody has their own um, their own taste, their own style. Um, you could take and give the same exact images um, to different people, give them the same tools to work with, um, give them an idea of what you want, and I can guarantee you that every single one of them will be different. That's just how it goes. It's all in the artist's perception. Okay, so I, I'm good with that for now. We're just gonna kind of leave that part alone. Now I wanna go and I want to add another layer. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna find something else that I wanna put in there. And I still have a lot of my images from the Daisy um, collection I've created a week or so ago. And I'm just looking to see, um, I really do love roses. So you can imagine there's going to be something to do with roses. Let's see how that looks. Let me just take a look at it. Did it pull up? Yeah. Okay. So. All right, let's do that. Let's keep that one. I think that's what I want, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of thinking to myself. I'm gonna go up, I'm really gonna increase the opacity and I'm gonna increase my brush size because I have a lot of pink to knock down right now. 
and you can see now, see how big that brush size is? But you can also see the texture really good right there. And as you can see, I'm not doing anything to the white roses underneath because I'm not working on that layer. I'm going to reduce my brush size so that I don't get a hold of stuff I don't want to get rid of. Like I said, I've done that more times than you can imagine. And it's easy to do. But, you know, it's one of those things. There is the back button up here. I don't know if you can see it if it's on screen. Um, when you're working on um, like my iPad, I do have the back button. So it's just like on my computer, you know, if I make a mistake, I can go back and undo it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't let it intimidate you. I think that's the biggest thing is just not getting intimidated by um, Photoshop or, you know, whatever. Um, software that you decide to create in um just be confident you know you may not know what you're doing none of us really do but you know you just go in there confident and then you can deal with it um you can do whatever and if you make a mistake just start over or pick up where you left off or you know it's not the end of the world Okay, so I reduced the opacity down again because, like I said before, I want to knock some of this color down. I don't want it that bright. And you can do all of this on your computer, but you have to do this with your mouse. And maybe I am the crazy one, but I do not have that much control of my mouse. I can tell you that. So I think I'm actually going to, do, you know, erase quite a bit right in here so that the wood will actually show through. And again, it's just kind of how you want to, you just kind of get it in your mind as you're doing the design, you, I don't know, I think that's why I enjoy doing it because while I'm doing the designs, I really honestly don't think about a lot of things. I am just enjoying the, I, you know, I love paper, obviously, that's why I'm in junk journals and that kind of stuff. Um, but I love the way it feels when I'm like coloring on the paper. Um, well, and I say the paper because I do have the, um, I have the paper um, screen protector on my iPad. So it really does, it feels like paper. And that was just too much. You know what, I really don't like that. So I can either hide that layer, so it's still there, or I can just delete that layer altogether. Now, if I've accidentally deleted it and I'm like, oh, I actually want that back, there it is. So we're just gonna delete it because I'm really not happy with that. So I'm just going to go back to files. And I'm gonna look and see. I may have to go to my roses file. Yes, I have a roses file because I love roses, I'm telling you. I love roses so much. Okay, let me just look and see. Let's try that one, if it'll load, there we go. Ooh, how pretty. Now I can take this little, um, you see the, the move dots here? I can take this top one and I can turn it. And so that's what I've done. I'm gonna click done. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back over and use the brush. And I'm really, as I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to get rid of most of this rose right here. Because I really want just that one mainly in the corner. So I just increased my opacity some so that I can just get it done a little quicker. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of that rose. Because I really don't want that one. I want this big one. And I know I am shaking the camera and I am so sorry. And it's so hard for me to color and halfway be still like because I really get into it when I'm coloring like this and that's what I consider it it's just like me coloring okay so I've got rid of most of that rose so now I am going to reduce my opacity back down some hang on one second okay and I'm back I'm sorry about that that was my husband messaging to let me know that he's on his way so when he gets here I will have to go because the dogs go crazy even crazier than what they are yeah okay so I've reduced my opacity and so like I did over here I'm gonna knock down the color some let me reduce that opacity a little bit more and I'm gonna reduce my brush size a little bit so I'm just gonna on the edges I really want it to be more knocked down than anywhere else because it's worn looking okay and then right through here I can just kind of knock it down some I just want to give it a softer feel and I don't like the way that done so let me I'm just doing the um, undo button and I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And I'm going to reduce the opacity even more. So then I can just come through there. And it, you can see that it's just, but, but I'm not going to end up with lines like I did have. And because I'm doing it on this, it's not affecting the white roses because I'm not working on that layer. something else let's go um, let's see what we can add oh how about a bingo card yep that's what I want to do we'll stick it right there and let's put it under the rose so to do that is I just br dropped it I dra um, drag it down to underneath the rose but I want to do the same thing I want to get rid of some of it so I'm going to reduce my um, brush size I'm going to check my opacity and because I haven't changed the value of the brush it's still set on clear let me hide the rose for a moment the rose is still there but I've got it hidden so that I can work right here uh, nope see I was working in the rose make sure you click the um, layer that you want to be working on okay so I am just kind of going through and knocking some of this down may even delete quite a bit of it or clear quite a bit of it because I'm working with my clear brush and I'm sorry I've got my hand all up in the way where you can't see Now, when I'm using the brush like this, if I want to, I want to keep the black, but I want to take out the thing, I can really do that because the black is so dark, it's going to take a little bit more to get rid of it. And so you'll see that I am 
getting rid of the color, but you see the black is still pretty strong. So let's do that and leave color just in a few spots because this is an old worn bingo card. Okay, so we have color just in a few spots. Let's take out some of the black even. And so I'm just gonna increase the opacity a little bit and I'm going to take out some of the black. I want to make this bingo card look like it's really worn and tattered. And so when I'm doing this, I just kind of think about how it would look if I actually found an old bingo card. Um, where would it be worn at so bad? I'm going to reduce the opacity again because I want to take out, this is still a little too brown looking for me. It's just a little too bright. Okay, so now let me go back to the rose and let me unhide it. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'm liking how that looks. But let's go in and let's add something else. What do we want? Oh, let's add some words. Okay. Now, when I do that, you can see the words are on top of everything. And I really don't want that. So I'm gonna hold it and pull it. So now it's under the red rose. Still want it under more. Now it's under the bingo card. Now it's under that rose. I'm so sorry. So I am going to actually hide these layers here to where the only layer that we can see is my blue background and the words. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to take down some of those words. Now I could, if I wanna just do it, I can do it like this and reduce the opacity of them. But I actually don't wanna do that yet. I will be doing that in a minute. But right now, I just kinda of wanna go through, kind of at random, just kinda of take some out. Let me go up on the opacity just a little bit so I can actually get rid of some of the words. And I don't have any rhyme or reason for why I'm going through in the different places. I am just enjoying the fill of the pen and paper or, you know, Apple Pencil and iPad, whatever. <laughs> I'm just enjoying it. I'm taking the time, you know, because when I start thinking about it, that's when I really start messing it up and I don't like the way that it turns out. Okay. So now I want to, now what I want to do is I want to unhide the other layers because I wanna see how it's looking. And that's still a little bit too dark for me. So I'm leaving these layers open and I'm clicking back on the, um, the layer that has the writing. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit until I see it where it's just barely. Okay, I think I like that. Yeah, it's not a lot, but it's enough that you know there's some words there. Let's add something else. Hmm. What do we want to add? We could add more words. <laughs> oh, here, here, this is a Paris address. 
and you see because of where what layer I was on when I added this it added it underneath the flower lay layers and I'm good with that so I'm sorry I didn't tell you what I was doing so I'm on that layer that has that ad, um, writing there I'm going over here to the select um, button and so now I can move it and so I'm going to move it and I think I'm gonna just like put it here and then I'm gonna actually drag it to where it's on top of that and then now let's get our pencil and let's get rid of a little bit of it I'm sorry guys I apologize for the dogs barking And I'm good with that. It's not something that you can really see, but I, you know, I like stuff like that. I'm just going to see what else I can add in here. Um, you can add textures. You can add lace. You can, you know, whatever you can think of, you can add it. Um, I like that and I'm gonna oops let me click my thing there and I'm just working in that layer I'm going to reduce that down a little bit that is just too much black it's too stark okay and I'm Okay guys, I am back. I do apologize for that. So, like I was saying, this layer is, it's pretty much done. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and export this layer. And I'll do that right here, the little arrow up. I'm going to do publish and export. And I'm going to go ahead and do this as a PNG because I may take it over into Canva and do uh, a little bit more to it. So I'm just going to hit export and I'm going to do save image. Now this page is complete. Um, I love the way that it's looking, but what if I want to make this into a journal page? So let me do this. I'm actually going to exit out. I'm going back to create new and remember I still have all of my settings reduce this down now let me show you this I want to pull in photos and I am going to pull that photo of the uh, page that I just did so this is one layer I didn't want to do anything with the other one that had all of the layers should I want to come back in and um, edit somehow. So now that I've got that, and like I said, I'm going to be making this into a, um, like a journal page that can be written on. So I'm going to go over here to the properties and I'm going to reduce the opacity. So I've just reduced the opacity of the entire page. But now I need to add something that somebody can write on it. So I'm going to go to Files. And I am going to say in Graphics Fairy. Now Graphics Fairy um, is one that you must change at least 40%. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, now I am going to be doing some videos this weekend. I have a great Canva video. Um, let me grab this and just kind of show you real quick what I will be doing for Canva. I don't know if you can see, I have some um, little flashcard type things prepared. Okay, sorry, see I've seen a squirrel. I need to start putting a little squirrel on my video every time I run off track. Okay, so this is Vintage Line Paper from Graphics Fairy. Let's take a look at it. Mm, it's not, that could work, but I'm really, uh, I'm looking
looking for something a little bit more lined than that. So what I done was hit cancel. Um, now if I had already added it, I could have just went in and deleted the layer. Um, so that's the biggest thing with this. It's just don't be scared of it. Um, I was terrified of Photoshop. I am not going to lie. I was absolutely terrified of working in Photoshop. Um, I, I just, I, I didn't think that I could do it. Okay, this is blank paper ephemera. Let's see what that is. Oh, there we go. I like that. Okay, so I'm just going to expand it. I want to cover the entire page with it. Um, and I think I still... I could bring it on up to where all you seen was the, the lines, but I think I like it up there like that where it's looking like a ledger. So I'm going to click done. So now the way that I have this, you cannot see the layer underneath, but that's okay because we are going to go back over here to our brush tool. And I'm just making sure that I still have it set to clear. The opacity is at 73. I'm going to reduce it down a little bit, maybe 58 right there. Um, size is at 96. Let's get it to about one. It's 137 right there. Okay. So whatever you think of your journal pages, especially if you fold it in half, you're going to want writing space in this area and in this area. So I kind of want to make sure to leave the lines and stuff there. So now what I can do, I wonder what it would look like. That's what I want to do. Okay, let me go back and show you what I just did. Okay, so this is where we're at. But I just got to thinking about something. So I actually took that layer and I moved it under that the layer there with the fly, flowers. I can't talk. And I'm liking this very much so. So instead of working on this layer, the layer with the paper, I actually want to work on my design. And again, remember, we want this area to write in and this area to write in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start getting rid or reducing. Let me go a little bit larger, not much, just slightly. And I'm just going to start, um, not necessarily getting rid of the flower image, but I am going to very much reduce what is seen. And I was about to try and say some fancy name, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. So, what is it, vignette? That's kind of how you want to do it. I'm telling y'all, I don't know all these kind of things. Now, my husband, on the other hand, oh my goodness. And I've told him that I could just sit and listen to him read a dictionary. He talks so eloquent and just completely opposite of me. Yep. We are yin and yang. I'm the country girl. He's the city boy. And he talks so proper. And then there's me. <laughs> and so you can still kind of see a little bit of the outline of the roses. But you have somewhere to journal on. So I'm just going to go over here to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. Or I could have just brought it all the way across. And we may do that. What we may do is save the, the image like this. And then I may go back in and take it all the way across and save the image. So that the purchaser um, can decide which image they want to use. And I have done that on a few of my kits where um, when I've made the kits, um, I'm 
love the dark, how dark the um, page was before I re reduced the opacity of it. But then when I reduced the opacity, I love the way that um, it looked in the lighter color. And so whenever I would do that, I think Timeless Treasures was one of those kits. I would just include the light and the dark. And that way um, the purchaser could decide, you know, which one they wanted to use. Because I could not figure out which one I liked the best. Now, one thing about this grid paper or the lined, uh, like, ledger paper that I put behind here, it has a center, um, a line right in the center, so that definitely helps. Okay. Now, and as you can see, you can still see um, the image you can see the um, paper that you can write on. Now there are still a few other things that I can do. Um, so that you could consider that done. But let's go and let's just see what it would do if I done color burn. I don't know. Let's try it. And let's change the brush. Let's go to Natural Edge. I don't know what it's gonna do. We're just gonna see. It's at a 60 size. Opacity is at 58. I'm still working on this layer, so let's just see. Okay, it's just kind of making that area darker. Um, that I'm coloring on. See, I don't know if you can see how darker rose that the um, rose down there got. So I'm just kind of doing that around the edge. Um, so it'll really define the edge. You know, normally I don't like my edges defined too much. But in this situation, I really do want the edge of this paper more defined. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just making that paper edge pop a little bit. You can really see it down on the bottom there. Okay, now let's go right here and let's see what it does if I do it right in here some. This may not work. No, I don't like that. So let's take that out. Let's do the... Sorry about that. My alarm went off. Letting me know it's getting close to time for work. I have my alarms set for every 15 minutes. It's kind of my check and balance because I can get in here and I will just get so busy that I get called up. And then I'd end up being late because I'd have so much stuff out on my desk and I can't leave with a mess on my desk. So I just kind of have to have a check and balance system for myself. And so it's picking up whatever color there is underneath it. And so that was writing there. I don't know if you could see it got the green, the really dark green leaf. Up there it's a little darker green. Okay, I think, let me get rid of some of that and let's just see what it would do if I done linear burn instead. Now I probably could have put a mask on this and would have been just fine, but um, I'm just working with this right now. So let's see what linear burn does. So I'm leaving everything the same, the opacity, my brush size, I just changed it to linear burn. 
that looks real close to the same, honestly. It may be a little bit darker. Yeah, I'm not real, let's see. What if I change the color? Like to the color of like a burnt. Oh yeah, okay. So let's take that stuff off where I just done that. Let's go to linear burn. And I'm thinking what color tattered pages look. So that's what I'm kind of going to. And so now that I have that, now I'm going to just go around the edge really good. And that's a little too thick of a line for me. So let's say, uh, let's do animator pencil. And I, because I use this one quite a bit, I have it set at seven. I can go in and make it larger if I want to, but I really like this size because I want that fine detail around the corner there. And so the more I go over it, the darker it's going to get. Now, the only thing I want to make sure that I don't do is I really don't want you to see those sharp pencil marks. So if I need to go back over it with a different brush, I will. And as you can see, I'm just kind of burning around the area where I um, took away some of the image. I don't want to do the whole thing like that. See, the back button is my favorite. It's my buddy. Let's say add paper texture. And let's reduce the size of that. We'll go 11. Let's just see what it does. Okay, I like this one. Let's go a little bit larger, maybe 25. Yes, this is the one I want. So as you see, it's not giving me those, um, it's not giving me those really harsh lines that the animator pencil brush was. And I'm so sorry if I'm getting all up in the way. And I'm doing this very lightly with my Apple pencil. And again, you can do this on the computer with your mouse. Um, I just like the control that I have when I'm doing it on the iPad with the pencil. Now, if this isn't dark enough for me, which it actually is, but let me just show you, if it's not dark enough for you, I can go in and I can re um, increase the opacity so that whenever I do it, it's gonna go ahead and do it a bit darker at the one time and I wouldn't have to go back over it so much so let me just try and get this done real quick get it at least to where I'm happy with how it looks now it did get me some lines there that I don't want so let me take that off I don't want those lines so I may have to increase the size of my brush a little bit and then we'll do that. And again, I'm just doing very lightly. And I could work like right here, I can work in this one spot and you can see it's really getting dark there. Um, I'm just, I like to work around the page and kind of, um, do it all at one time, you know, all at the same time, and then I can go back in and darken everything at the same time or, you know, whatever. It's just how I work, um, and you may do better working in one section at a time. Um, so that's what you need to do is just find something that works for you because everything that works for me is not going to work for you. What works for you is not going to work for me. Um, so just keep that in mind. 
Okay, so I'm really happy with that. So let me go right here and let me just add some linear burn onto this. And as you can see, it's just like putting grungy spots on the paper. And you know, when you get paper, um, old paper, it does have grungy spots. So I just got a little bit there. Now I'm just gonna go over here to this other side and I'm gonna work on it some. Yep. See, Photoshop is not as scary as people think it is. Um, I've had people tell me that they've taken courses and just couldn't figure it out. Um, and that they learn more on my videos. God only knows how. Um, but what, I'm, what I do is I just... I just wanted to show you what works for me and I know that whenever um, I started out trying to learn Photoshop, one of the hardest things for me was the clipping mask because I wanted to be able to create the envelopes where you um, put your image into the envelope, you know, into the template and I couldn't find I mean, I, and I did, I paid. I couldn't find that anywhere. And I'm like, what? That's what I really needed the most. And so that's why I done that video is because I remembered what I needed. And I'm just gonna kind of feather the edges a little bit because I kind of got them a little contrasty, I mean, you know. Okay, I'm not real happy with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the other thing that I do. I may get to almost the end of a design and then not like what I just did. Now, if I had done this as a mask, which I probably should have, all I would have had to have done was either disable the mask or delete the mask. And I wouldn't have to be doing the back button so much. But like I said, sometimes I do crazy stuff. So in this situation, I actually like the page better like this. Um, so we're gonna call this one complete and we are going to do the same thing. We're gonna export it as a PNG. And I'm going to save my image. Okay, so now we're gonna go back over here we're going to go back down to our landscape brush. We're going to go back down and go to clear. And I'm going to go ahead and take this part on out right here. That's the coffee pot saying it's shutting off. And so now you have almost a full page. So now whoever um, purchases this design can choose which journal page they want. And you can still kind of see um, some of the image in the back. Um, now what I could do, I could go to properties and I could reduce or increase the opacity like that and so you see how much darker it is but I really want it um, that reduced opacity I like the reduced opacity and now I'm gonna click save save image okay guys and just like that we've already completed three pages for our digital paper collection. Um, there are days that I absolutely get stopped. Um, let me go back and, you know, like I have, you can see here, I have, you know, there's some of my kits, but 
there's a lot of pages in here of designs that I am working on that just have not, I have not published them because I'm stopped, you know? Um, it is part of it. Um, you, you will get into a writer's block or a creator's block. Um, when you do, just know that it, that's not um, going to last forever. Um, and the biggest thing is just sit down, even if you have nothing in mind that you want to do. And just like I'm doing right now, I'm just throwing stuff on here. Um, I don't know how I want the next papers for th this collection that I'm creating. I don't know what I want. I don't know what theme it's going to take. I don't have a clue. But what I will do is I'll just sit down here and I'll just start creating pages. You know, even if I, you know, just like there, I put stuff down, I took stuff off. That's fine. Um, you just have to do anything that'll just keep you designing. Um, and I just thought about another design. Let me do this one real quick. Let me just see. I am going to go back to that um, wood pattern that we had. And I don't know, this may not work. I'm going back to that brush and I'm just going to take some of that off. And I'm just, you know, this may not look good. But then again, I may actually like it. And this is what I mean when I say, just sit down and start designing. Even if you doesn't don't think that something will look good, if you have that idea in your mind, go ahead and do it. Even if you have to delete it, or even if you create it and then you look at it and you say, mm, I'm just not really happy with that. I'm not gonna publish it. That's fine. You know, but at least you will know because otherwise you'll it'll bug you or I know it does me. If I have a thought in my mind of something I want to do for my papers and then I try to push past it and not do it, then it just, it's like it nags and nags and nags. So I'll just sit down and do it. A lot of those designs, nobody ever sees. Um... But there are some of them that I look at it and I'm like, wow, okay, girl, you go, girl. That was pretty good. Yeah, so see, I actually think I like this. And I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit more. Yeah, I do. I like that. There. Okay, we're going to export that. How long did it take me to do that page? Okay, so I'm saving the image. That's it, guys. We're done. I'm going to call this video um, complete. Um, and don't forget, stay tuned. Lots more videos coming up on my designing and then which um, design software to use, choosing which one is right for you how to get your images. I will go through and show you some of the sites that I get my images from. Some of the sites I do have to pay for. Some of them are absolutely free. I will show you both. Um, so that way you can make the decision whether it's worth you paying or if you would rather just stick with the free um, sites. So we will be going through all of that. Um, check out my other videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It helps me know if I am doing content that others want. Um, if you have any ideas or if there's something that you want me to do a video on, please leave a comment below. If I don't know how to do it, I'll figure it out or we can figure it out together. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and I hope you all have a wonderful day.